Welcome to this video about request throttling uh, with using memory cache in Blazor server. So we are not going to use the distributed cache. So if you host your application on different uh, servers, uh, you can't uh, implement the exact solution that I'm going to, to present you in this tutorial. Uh, I start out with a thought experiment by uh, presenting you the template and always refreshing or requesting a new uh, weather forecast table. So uh, what is happening? Because this is a Razor component and in Blazor server, they are getting rendered on the server. Uh, it can get quite expensive. Uh, if you like, for example, uh, have a data grid or with, with more entries, then it's getting quite expensive. So we want to have a mechanism that tells the user you are requesting the resource so many times uh, there is no use case uh, in which this would make sense unless you want to harm us. Uh, therefore, I am going into startup and of course, when we use Blazor server, we have the same startup file as ASP.NET Core because everything is rendered on the server, of course. So add memory cache, this adds uh, a type uh, uh, this adds an object of type iMemoryCache. Here we are writing our own middleware. Now, the context is the HTTP context. Next is a function of a function with return type task that represents the the next uh, middleware component in the pipeline. And because we are awaiting this function, uh, this lambda here is returning a task. So it's of type function, HTTP context, function task, task. Now, of course, await next only these requests that don't uh, get filtered out by our memory cache uh, throttling mechanism are getting to this point. The other ones, we will ter terminate the request. Now, if the request path, now I have to call two strings so that we can use strings method, ends with fetch data. So we are only going to use it on this endpoint because here it's a the most expensive to calculate. Uh, then we first have to re retrieve memory cache from the service uh, collection or from the service provider. Request services, get required service. I'm using the generic one here. I memory cache. Now I want to store an object of type I memory cache in, uh, in a reference of, of type memory cache. So I have to cast it to memory cache. And uh, what a surprise, the object that we are getting here back is of course of type memory cache. Uh, well, implements the interface I memory cache. So now uh, what's, what's the memory cache? It's like a, a dictionary. So first we have to define the key. The key will be the, the IP address of the user connection remote IP address that makes the request. Now we search our, uh, our memory cache to see if we have uh, a value that is, is associated with this IP address. If so, we are retrieving it. Give it the name count. Now we will define that when the count is greater than 10, we will terminate the, the response. First, uh, set the status code of 422, meaning too many requests. So here we could have just also said 422 at 429, because that's just a hint. Uh, and then we We write a message. Uh, yeah, we don't do that here. Now, until now, uh, it's a bit hard to, to get the point of all it because like count greater than 10 in, in which time span. So that's the 
question that we are going to, to answer now. First, I have to set the options. So when we add a new item into the, the memory cache, uh, when is this item going to expire? New memory cache entry options. Set absolute expiration time span from seconds 10. So we have two times 10. If we have more than 10 requests during 10 seconds, then the user has to wait uh, for 10 seconds. Here we set first the key. Then we want to, uh, to increment the count by one because he has made now one more request and then give it the options. So I quickly go over everything. Uh, here we are getting the, the object uh, of, of memory cache that we have registered in, in the dependency injection. Then we are uh, here uh, calculating or retrieve the IP address from the request. We are looking if in the memory cache, in, if in this like dictionary uh, object, we have uh, a stored count. If you have one, so if the user has made a request in the last 10 seconds, because if the user has made a request that is older than 10 seconds, it will have expired here in the memory cache. If the user has made a request in the last 10 seconds, we will look uh, how many requests are stored he has made. If he has made more than 10 requests, we will uh, like terminate the response and he won't uh, proceed any further. If he has uh, not made 10, then we will just like increment the his made request. So if he has made five in the last 10 seconds, now he has six. And, and after 10 seconds, uh, yeah, this will, will be deleted from our memory cache. So uh, let's have a look. Let's navigate to fetch data. OK. We have made 10 requests uh, under 10 seconds. Now we have to wait 10 seconds. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.